the psychedelic bearings, hydrostatic bearings do not regard motion of the one surface to another surface. Okay. In this, uh, this hydrostatic bearing can be defined as one in which the loaded surface are separated by a fluid field, which is forced between them by an externally generated pressures and thus formation of the fluid field and a successful operation of the bearing requires a continuous supply of the lubricant fluid through the pump, which can operate continuously. In hydrostatic bearings, this high pressure lubricating fluid is created by this external source called as pump. The bearings clearance changes with accordant load changes. As the fluid supplied to the races at certain high pressure, a particular pressure profile exists over the area of the bearings. And this pressure distribution can be maintained only if the fluid is supplied to the races at a rate equal to the rate at which it escaped over the lands of the bearings. Now, we have to see <coughs> how this hydrostatic bearing can fulfill some of the requirements. So, these bearings can fulfill heavy loading at low speeds, extreme low frictional resistances and high positional accuracy like in machine tool spindles. Okay. So, you have to see the arrangement of this hydrostatic lubrication system now. Okay. Here, there are two basic elements of this lubrications. First one is lubrication supply at constant pressures and lubrication supply at constant flow. So, in this first arrangement, lubrication supply at constant pressures, in this figure we are seeing, this is the runner, <coughs> which is a upper plate, which is called as runner, this is lower plate or lower member is called as pad and this pad has central races also called as pockets like this and land over the seals around the races. The load is as well applied to this runner. Okay. And the lubrication is supplied at constant pressure PS through a compensator of these restrictors. Okay. Through this compensator or the restrictor, we are supplying the continuous lubricant at constant pressure. <coughs> and when the system is to be targeted, the pressure builds up in the races. And in this races, the supply pressure drops to rest pressure PR. And this pressure drop from PS to PR can be controlled by the fixed compensator placed between the supply manifold and its bearing. Okay, the supply and its bearing <coughs> and the gap between the land and runner. Okay, the gap between the land and runner and thus the flow of lubricant, basis pressure and the land clearance or gap are interdependent. The equilibrium position will be reached when the flow is such as to build the pressure necessary to balance the load. And this equilibrium is restored in a way that is load increases, it reduces the flow by decreasing the bearing clearance edge. Okay. Yes. And the resistance pressure PR increases. Also, as the load decreases, it reduces the pressure PR by increasing the bearing pressure <coughs> H. Thus, the bearing stiffness term can be defined as the rate at which the load changes with respect to the bearing clearance. <coughs> okay. So, in another system here, we are supplying this lubricant <coughs> or fluid to this compensator at constant pressure to this younger end pads. <coughs> In next arrangement, here we are seeing <coughs> lubrication at constant flow <coughs> or the arrangement with constant flow lubricants. 
<coughs> in this element of the hydrostatic stress bearing with constant flow, and this system is free from restrictor. There is no any restrictor between this system, flow system, and this bearing system. So the supply pressure P S, supply pressure P S is always the pressure of resistance. In this element, a high pressure pump is assumed to deliver the fluid from this leaker wire. Through this pump, a high pressurized lubricant is supplied to this resistance. <coughs> For an increase in load, cause the land clearance H to decrease the resistance pressure P R, and which must increase provided the flow is kept at constant value <coughs> to balance the load. The flow is always kept constant by pressure compensated flow regenerating holes. Okay. So through this regenerating hole, we are putting this pump pressure at constant. And <coughs> the lubricant is fed at constant supply pressure from common systems. So these are the two arrangements for this hydrodynamic, sorry, hydrostatic lubrication system. So the hydrostatic systems are always some advantages. It can take high load at extremely low speeds, low frictional characteristics, high stiffness and good damping characteristics, high positional accuracy, etc. Okay. With along this advantages, these hydrostatic lubrications are also having some limitations. For operation of hydrostatic bearings, the number of auxiliary equipment are required. Example, high pressure pump, filter, strainer unit, relief valve, oil supply line, etc. This hydrostatic lubrication requires space for fluid cleaning requirements. They are expensive and high maintenance cost. Also, the overall power loss comprising of this pumping power loss and friction power loss is not necessarily low. So these are some limitations. And with these limitations, <coughs> some we are having some special application of this hydrostatic bearings. These bearings are can be used for this type of lubrications are can be used in vertical turbo generators. Ball mills, telescope machines, in precise machine tools, in force measuring equipments, in gyroscope, <coughs> in ultra centrifuge, and in high speed dental drills, opening their high RPMs. Okay, so this with regarding with hydrostatic lubrications. And this is the pressure development in this lubrication. Okay. How the pressure is developed between these hydrostatic lubrications? This type of bearings are also called as step bearings. Okay. So this principle of this hydrostatic step bearing actions we are seen in figure. And in this, the lubricant from the zero air is pumped by constant displacement pump and is forced into a Central circular basis and then close toward between the surfaces. In this analysis, pressure distribution analysis for delivering an equation for this total load carrying capacity, we are assuming some assumptions. And in this assumption, the first one is the resist depth is quite enough for the pressure in it to be fairly uniform. Okay. For pressure development, the bearing is assumed to be have low rotational velocity and its effect is neglected for pressure developments. And the flow can be considered as a laminar across the land of pad. Okay. So flow must be a laminar. And we have to analyze this pressure developments or the flow from these equations flow through a rectangular slot. And in which we are seen before the flow through rectangle slot is always equal to delta P VHQ upon 12 mu into 
And from these equations, we are going to analyze this kind of varies. So today we stop here. In next lecture, we are seeing this. So thank you.